Hello, hello, hello. Chat, give me a push if you can hear me. Sound check, mic. One, two. How about Tesla today, ladies and gentlemen? Quick $14,000 in profits for the team. Not too shabby, not too shabby. I hope everyone had a great, great day today. Welcome to the Max Options Trading Beginner Course, day seven. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. What you're gonna need today is a pen and paper, an empty notebook, and uh, wait a minute. Yep, this is it. You're gonna need your pen and paper, empty notebook, phone, laptop, PC, or tablet, and some room for push-ups. All right, let's move on. This is, oh my God, ignore the old dates. Oh my goodness. So we finished week one. Week one was fantastic. Went through the Greeks, support resistance. We had a great class session on technical analysis yesterday. Went a little long and that brings us into our day trading and my personal day trading and swing trading strategies, which I'm gonna go over for you guys today. And you're definitely gonna wanna take some notes because I'm gonna go over on how I standardize this, how I do this quickly, efficiently, and how I locate some of my trades. That's gonna bring us in the discipline and risk management, which new traders have none. So if you are a new trader, I highly suggest being uh, readily available for tomorrow's course. And then I'll go over some advanced strategies. I'll tell you guys how I pay myself, play uh, taxes and reinvesting. I'll send you off as confident, good traders that you're supposed to be. Nine to five isn't for everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to those that were a few minutes early. Make sure you guys find a nice quiet place for your distractions. Be respectful at all times to your classmates and to me as the instructor. Stay on mute. And if you have any questions during any time during this session, write them down. Don't let them slip by. This is a quicker class today. Um, should only be about 30, 40 minutes. Uh, so those questions, get them written down. I'm sure you're going to have some. Stay focused, stay on task, and some foul language will be used. This is an adult setting. So if I drop a scallywag, or a whippersnapper, I apologize. Put some earbuds in, don't be a shy. I have, I have a sexy voice, I really do, I know I do. I mean, you can't tell me I don't sound like I should be managing a strip club DJ booth. So just, just let that resonate in the back of your heads real quick. Before we begin, Make sure you guys are following us, Facebook, Max Options Trading, Twitter, Max Options Trade, IG. At any point you take in this class, you tag us on the IG, we'll tag you right back. And it doesn't matter for future YouTube use, whenever. Tag us on that IG, we'll tag you back at the clout you deserve. Follow me on TikTok, Max Options Trading with two Gs. On Reddit, if you want any good analysis or updates, we're always ready for a good discussion. And then don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube Big channels coming soon, all kinds of educational content courses. We want to see you succeed, all right? Day trading versus swing trading. I hope you guys all had a great day today. I really do. A lot of people killed it on Tesla today. A lot of people, I hope you guys are able to jump in at some point. <clears throat> Ain't nothing better than a nice kick of bubble water right to the back of the throat. It's like smoking a Newport. Oh my God, it's fantastic. Day trading versus swing trading. Let's dig in, all right? The major distinction between day trading and swing trading is usually the holding time, all right? Swing trading often involves at least one overnight hold, whereas day traders close out positions before the market closes intraday. To generalize, day trading positions are limited to a single day, while swing trading involves several days to weeks. Leap trades can go even months. By holding overnight, the swing traders incur the unpredictability of overnight risk. Um, so swing trading is very risky, just like day trading. Uh, we have less volatility, but we have the overnight uh, risk. Gap ups, gap downs against your position could happen. By taking on this overnight risk, swing traders are usually done with a smaller position size compared to day trading. Day traders typically use larger position sizes and may use margin even to enter a large position. Uh, I copied this whole class, just like 95% of it. Um, I'm not a fan of using margin, all right? Cash is king when it comes to using your own money to trade. Only risk what you're willing to lose. Don't go into debt trading. Um, whatever you have money-wise, use that only. Try and stay cash. Margin is enabled, uh, level three options trading for spreads and such, but Try and stay cash, guys. Don't 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 go into debt. That's the opposite of the goal here. The goal is side hustle, secondary stream of income, or even quitting that nine to five, right? 
Swing traders also have access to margin, but may utilize smaller positions initially and then scale to a larger position as the TA plays out in the trader's favor. All right, that's pretty interesting concept. So a swing trader may start small. And as the TA starts ripping into their favor, they might add here, here, and here as the TA says that it's going to go to here. And so they may scale up in their positions. Very interesting concept. So what the hell is day trading, huh? We always hear about it, but what is it? Look at this guy. All right. Look at this guy over here, everyone. Focus your attention on the right. This guy's got two keyboards because he's so high speed and two mouses. Look at this. Three screens. One, two, three. Two keyboards and two mouses. This is fantastic. All right. This is high speed. This is above all of our level. I actually think this is Elon Musk right here, um, right there. So. All right, focus, guys. You're losing track. Everyone do push-ups. Day trading is the act of buying and selling stocks or stock options with the same day or even multiple times over the course of a day. Taking advantage of small price moves can be a lucrative game if it's played correctly and you're on the right side, obviously. But it can also be a dangerous game for newbies or anyone who doesn't adhere to a well-thought-out strategy or intention. All right? So here's some day trading principles that I found that I really like. All right? Knowledge is power. So you want to know if there's been news, upgrades, downgrades on a stock prior to your day trading, knowledge is power. All right. You want to have a set aside funds. You want to have a set amount of equity that you're trading for day trading. You want to set aside the time to be focused on your day trade. Unfortunately, with day trading, you have to stay focused on the charts or you have to set limit stop losses and, and stop, uh, stop orders uh, or else you're just going to be staring at the screen. Start small or start with a paper account. Don't just jump into day trading um, thinking that you know shit. Day trading is very, very, very hard. Um, so start small. Don't day trade uh, penny stocks at first uh, because of the volatility. It's an easy way for you to feel comfortable with averaging down and averaging down and averaging down. Next thing you know, you have 60% of your equity in one play because it's just pennies, right? Stay away from them until you know what you're doing. Time your trades out. Remember, the intention of day trading is day trading. So you have from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. to time that trade out. Say, all right, I'm bailing at this or I'm, I'm going to ride it till this. Uh, cut losses with your stop orders. Keep, keep stop losses on day trades. It's just, it's a great way that if your stock goes up 10% um, or your option goes up 10%, you could just put a 1% or 2% stop limit and you're always gonna, you're, you're removing all the risk and you're gonna make a small profit no matter what. And one to percent is a huge win in the world of options. Remember that. You should be realistic about profits on day trades. You're not gonna always get your 70, 90, 200% day trades. Yes, it happens, but you have to think realistically. For me, 10 to 15%, I'm cutting half of my gains right there. And then I may let a little bit ride 20, 30%. I'm usually taking my profits and I'll look for another entry because day trading, you can make 10 entries during the day. It doesn't matter. Stay cool, stay calm, stay collected. Remember, trading is not emotional. It's technical. So have a plan, set your plan out and stay relaxed. Stick to that plan, all right? Manage your trades. If you guys are in my Discord, you'll hear me. I haven't traded in two days because I'm just managing my open two trades that I have right now. So managing your trades is almost part of, it's, it's part of trading, all right? So here's four good principles on finding a day trade. So a lot of people are like, how do you guys find these trades? Well, here's some of the things that we look for. Good volume. Day traders like stocks because they're liquid, meaning they often trade often in high volume. So you want to stock with high volume. Any liquidity allows a trader to buy and sell without affecting the price much. Um, so good volume is something that you can look up on any screener. So you want to find anything like unusual volume will be any ticker that has 2x the volume of its average daily volume. So you can look, start with that. Some volatility. So you want volatility. A volatility means the securities price changes frequently. This kind of uh, movement is necessary for a day trader to make profit. And it's good for day trading, but not swing trading. Remember, swing trading, you want to start with low volatility, whereas day trading, you want high volatility. Trade the stocks that you know, the companies that you know use and you know their support and resistance. You'll want to understand how the security trades and what triggers it to move. Will an earnings report hurt the company or help it? Is a stock stuck in a trading range bouncing consistently between two prices? Knowing a stock can help you trade. 
So you want to trade the stocks you know, trade the stocks with volatility, trade the stocks with good volume, and then newsworthiness. Media coverage gets people interested in buying and selling. The news on Tesla, the news on Apple today, the news on NVIDIA this week sent the market skyrocketing. All right, we are at all time highs day after day because new news keeps coming out every day on top tech stocks. And that newsworthiness creates volatility and liquidity. Many day traders can follow news and ideas and then you can act upon them. So that's what a lot of us did today. We were just sitting there hopping in on news uh, stocks, cashing out 20% in five seconds and you gotta be happy with that. All right, let's go over my day trading strategy. My Max's day trading strat. So let's let's open up trading view here. Let's go to the charts. So I'm gonna show you guys what I use here for day trading. The only thing that I'm missing from my day trading strategy that I don't have up here, we're gonna go up here to indicators on my favorites. You're gonna have the ATR trailing stop loss by Kihun. C hun or whatever, what the hell just happened? So click on that, let's add that to our chart. Then we'll come up here and we'll go to the settings. All right, with ATR, we're gonna leave it a five, one, two and a half multiplier. Uh, we're gonna come to style, we're gonna remove the bar color. I'm gonna remove the ATR trailing stop loss itself. The only thing I'm gonna keep is those buy and sell signals. I like the ATR trailing stop loss. It's a algorithmic indicator that's used for stopping, however, the great options book, Greg Collier said that you can use it for entries and I took a class on it and I love it. I think it's a great uh, indicator. For day trading, I only, if you look on my screen here, I only use the five minute and the 15 minute for confirmations. So the one minute, the, the three minute, they're, they're bullshit. You wanna use the, one, the five and the 15 for confirmations. There are four or five things, I believe four things that I really look at um, when it comes to day trading. So the first one is right here in front of our eyes. The first thing I look at when it comes to making a day trade is EMA posture, all right? So take a look at the EMA posture. The green is my 200, the teal is my 100, the yellow is the 50, the blue is the 21, and the purple is the nine, okay? That is bullish posture. When the 200 is at the bottom and the nine's at the top, you see we have bullish posture and the EMAs have been acting as a solid support resistance all the way during this massive uptrend. Does everyone see that? So I want to find a day trade that has good posture to match my intentions. If you're in a day trade, you want to see good bullish posture or else you may find yourself in a choppy consolidation like this or wherever the hell the last downtrend was on SPY. If you're trying to pick the bottoms, um, it could be tough. So like this, because you could see that the EMAs could act as resistance levels during peaks on a downtrend. Do you see this? During downtrends, you might get false breakouts and choppy consolidation. So it's tough to find bottoms like that. The best thing to do is wait until your EMAs are back in order. And once you have that good golden cross right here, the EMA signal, now we could probably enter around here instead of trying to guess it back here. So EMA posture is very important. Uh, conversely, from bullish posture, we can scroll up to Tesla here and we can see the bearish posture on the EMAs. This is my own private script that I have. If you guys are looking at my two-tone colors, um, and when my EMAs turn bearish, they all turn red. That's a massive sell signal that catches my eye for me. So we can see Tesla was choppy, consolidating. And then we got an EMA crossover and then the EMAs acted as resistance. So this was a good time for shorts. So EMA posture is the first thing, write that down. Uh, EMA posture is the first thing that I look for when I'm considering my trades. I wanna see am I bullish or am I bearish? Does everyone remember on, uh, we did our technical analysis class yesterday. We said that Tesla was in a flag. Does everyone see the the breakout of the flag here and the massive continuation today with the gap up. So let me draw this gap out real quick. Is it on the daily? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna draw a gap real quick because there's no reason while we're here not to do it. It looks just like that. That's it. Now we got our gap drawn out, we can move on. So EMA posture for day trading, that's my first thing. Okay, the next thing we're gonna look for is um, volume. 
So you want to see Matt Good daily volume. Remember, that's the that's the big one. So look right here. Look at this volume compared to yesterday's volume. Safe to say that Tesla got some good fucking volume today, right? Look at the size of that. EMA posture looks good this morning. We gapped up. Does everyone remember the technical analysis class, the gap and go, the 10 o'clock rule? Gap and went. Volume was through the roof today. Okay. So that's that's two of them right there. So I checked the EMA posture. I checked the overall technical analysis. I checked the volume. Next thing I'm going to check is the stochastics. Okay. So the stochastics is a little tough on the five minute. But let's go to the 15 minute to get a clearer view of the stochastics. Stochastics show me here on the gap up that we are topped out, broke down. But once this K crossed the D line again right here, it showed that Tesla picked up momentum again, but it never broke down into the bottom extreme, which is very bullish as well. So there was never a point where I would feel like this momentum on the stochastic uh, oscillator had lost all its value. And lastly, I would look for the RSI above the 50 if I'm looking to go long or a steady uptrend. These oversold or, or excuse me, overbought levels don't mean very much as you think on these shorter time frames when it's in, we're talking day trades. As long as it's above the 50, that's a good trade. Now, if we're trying to hit the bottom of a trade, if you're trying to catch the bottom of a sell-off, you'd wanna use EMA posture, stochastics, the K lines crossing the D, and then the RSI above 50, so something over here. So those are my, those are what I use. I use mostly volume, EMA posture. Then I check the momentum oscillators, the RSI and the stochastics. Um, I'm gonna look at the contracts to see what kind of volatility we got, what kind of spikes we're getting on the premiums. You wanna read the Greeks, oh, excuse me. You wanna read those Greeks and, and the implied volatility and see what those contracts are looking at. Lastly, what I'm looking for, let's click another stock, is even though they're all over the place, these buy and sell signals, uh, they're a great way to make entries when they match up. So if we just click on any stock, um, like right here, we got a buy signal on Square. Let's go to the 15. And we have the same buy signal right here. So right there, that tells me that the ATR is fired on the five and the 15. It bounced off the 50 EMA. The RSI broke above the 50 yard line. The stochastics have the K over the D. EMA posture looks good. Volume is up. Everything looks good to take this as, a, as an entry point right here. At any point bouncing off this 50 yard line, you would have made entry at about 259. And you could have wrote it up all the way until about 265 yesterday, or quick 266. $7 trade right there in a matter of 45 minutes to an hour, just because of that right there, everything lining up. So that's what I'm looking for. That's what I look for in my importance. So real quick recap for my day trading strat is EMA posture, is it bullish or bearish? Volume. Is it up nicely compared to the average daily volume? You can find that on any screener. You could find that on most of these sites here with TradingView um, down here. Days range, let's look at the volume. Key stats, average volume down here on the trading view on the bottom right, you'll see average volume is 11.5. The volume today was a 10.5, so a little bit less than normal. So we wanna find those stocks. I bet if we click on Tesla today, daily average volume is 31, but today's volume was 44 million. That's huge for Tesla. So that tells me automatically, oh, Tesla's got good volume today. What's going on? After I check the EMA posture, I'm going to look for that ATR. The last ATR was this 15 right here, 1145 on the 9th. So let's go to 1145 on the 9th here. We don't have another uh, five-minute ATR to match, and the EMAs don't enter. I would not have entered Tesla here. Not at all. But we have another fire at the top of this gap, flag breakout. You could have entered on the flag. Good volume today, EMA posture. You could have entered on this one up here. Even though the 15 still hasn't fired a sell on the five minute, you could have entered right here. Volume, K line crossed the D, EMA posture looks good. 
bouncing right above the 50 is a very bullish. You could have entered right here at 740 and you could have day traded this all the way up to the top today. So EMA posture, looking for those ATR signals. You want a five and a 15, that match. Looking at the stochastics, a fresh K over D bounce. And I'm looking for bullish posture in the RSI. Volatility and average volume have to be lower than the daily. That's how I day trade. That's how I've always day traded. That's how I make a lot of money doing so. On any stock, you could pick it out. Let's just say Facebook looked like it had a rough day. Very choppy, very choppy day, 5.15. We have a couple sales. This is the day today. So we got um, started off pretty bullish, big red candle. Let's see. This broke below the 50. This was very bearish on the stochastics. Uh, volume was significantly lower. So I probably want to pick Facebook to day trade today. That 15 minute sell signal at the end broke below the five here. So yeah, you could have day traded right here. You could have made entrance on this sell signal breaking below the nine EMA. Stochastics have a good cross down, broke below the 50 RSI right here. And as you could see, volume started pick, picking up nicely. So you could have entered shorts here uh, at 312. I would have entered this about 312. Uh, by the end of the day, we're about 310, 309, but this is a day trade. So the intentions have to stay the same. So you see, we got EMA posture showing bearish on the breaks and the crossovers. We got stochastics to help match our, our entry. We got a good rise in bearish volume and we broke the 50 yard line on the RSI. Everything matches up saying, yeah, this is gonna show probably a nice continuation here. Your stop losses on day trades will be the bounce of support. You can't be stubborn on day trades. Anytime you start bouncing around these EMAs, um, it's time to get out. Even on Tesla today, uh, it didn't break the nine or the 21 at once today. You see, it used the 21 as key support the entire time. Um, so you're gonna want to, you're gonna want to, uh, sorry, one second. You're gonna want to um, see that if it breaks the 21 day EMA there, that you should probably start looking to exit your, your long position because it has given up its EMA posture. And that's exactly how I day trade. You guys have any questions about that? Uh, please, please let me know. We'd love to go over it at the end. Day trading seems crazy. All right. So what the hell is swing trading? This is what I do now. I'm 99% I'm swing trader in this market. Um, it's a style of trading that attempts to capture short to medium term gains in a stock over a period of a few days to several weeks. Swing traders primarily use technical analysis to look for trading opportunities. Um, so you can use some fundamentals on swing trades, um, but TA is king. I love going after the TA. Swing trading involves taking trades that last a couple of days to several months, weeks, months. So I, some people in the Discord, we open a swing trade with an expiration date that's eight weeks out. And within three days, they're like, oh my God, I'm down 20%. What do I do? Are we holding? Are we cutting? What do we do? It's like, dude, this trade hasn't even started yet. Swing trading exposes a trader to overnight and weekend risk, um, whereas the price could gap up and open the following session with a substantially different price. Um, swing traders can take profits utilizing an established risk to reward ratio based on a stop loss. I'm gonna go over this tomorrow with you guys. I'm gonna go over my risk management, how I take profits, my risk to reward ratios. We're going over all of this tomorrow during risk management and it's gonna blow your minds. The risk management class how when we go over that, how to take profits, especially on swing trades. Um, you can take profits or losses based on technical indicators or price action movements, um, <clears throat> but there is a great way to assess swing trading. I'm going to go over it with you guys tomorrow, and I'm, you really don't want to miss tomorrow. I think that my uh, the plans that we write out for you guys is going to change everything about your trading. Here's some principles for swing trading. Align your trade with the market direction. So if the whole market's going green, don't be the guy trying to snipe a short. Um, stay stay with the, the, the market direction. 
long strength and short weakness. So if it's if it's looking weak, you go you go short. But in the long, if it's it's going to show strength, you go long. Obviously, trade the trend. The trend is your friend. Never fight the trends. I promise you will break your account. You will lose your money if you always try and fight the trend. I'm not a bear. I'm not a bull. I'm a surfer. All right. I'm trying to ride the waves every time all the way through. doesn't matter which way it's going. Fuck bears, fuck bulls. I'm a surfer. Get the bigger picture, all right? Use the four-hour chart and the one-day chart, even maybe even the weekly, but get out there and find the bigger picture, all right? Don't, don't get narrow-sighted when it comes to swing trading. Enter the trade near the beginning. It's referring to the beginning of a trend. So when you see a nice strong breakout, good volume, vol volatility is low, and you're saying, wow, this stock's going to bounce, enter, try and enter as close to the beginning of, of those trends as you can. Apply the rule of multiple indicators. So like I just did on my day trading, I showed you how everything matched up. Once all your stars align in your technical analysis strategy that works for you, then make your play confidently. Um, track a consistent group of stocks, your watch list which I have the same stocks every day. I have my portfolio list and I have my overall watch list where I like to trade options. And I know a lot of those stocks like the back of my hand, trade what you're familiar with. Enter a trade with a clear plan. Tomorrow we are designing trading plans. You're literally gonna be having your own trading plans that's mimicking mine, but you can change it and alter it, make it great what works for you. Always have a trading plan. Put the odds in your favor. That's risk to reward ratio all day. Always try and enter a trade with at least a minimum of uh, one to three risk to reward. We try and go greater from that um, and integrate some fundamentals into your TA. News, ER reports, um, the company standings, uh, things like that. You want to use that into your technical fundamental analysis um, or your fundamental analysis and, and match it with your technicals. That, that's how we do that. All right, so this is my swing trading strategy. I'm very picky with my swing trading strategy. I only do it um, when I'm very confident. So first, swing trading, I'm gonna back out to my four hour. Um, I'm also gonna get rid of all these arrows. Okay. So let's actually go to the daily. <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do, here's my watch list on the right. So I have a group of probably 30, 40 stocks here, right? The first thing I'm going to do on the daily is I'm going to switch to the Heikinashi candles because I like swing trading trends. Um, so I use my Heikinashi candles. Then I'm going to go to the top and then I'm going to be looking at the RSI only here. This I do every, every morning before I start work um, <clears throat> looking for trades. Excuse me one second, I'll grab a sip of this bubble water. My throat is all kinds of bubble. Yeah, damn, that's good. So what I do in the RSI is look, I am just gonna zip down and look for anything that may be oversold, overbought, or breaking through right here, the 50 yard line. So coop. all broke already then this is all i'm doing just a quick look at this just going through my stocks broke below the 50 right here this is amd Coop amd this is it so you can see some overbought levels here amazon microsoft tech's been running really hard save spirit airlines breaking below the 50. so i take note of all these stocks S was a SP 500 hitting a little bit overbought. And this is the one day chart. So these overbought levels are pretty strong. Nothing crazy, like nothing sticks out that's completely, you know, broken to the extremes of the RSI. But you could see some of these, look at this big break to the downside AT&T. For this, I'm going to get rid of the ATR trailing stop as well. I don't use it for the swing trading. 
Here we go. Oh, this is UVXY. Never mind. This is the three time leveraged VIX. So I won't touch that one. And that's it. That's it. So I went through all of them. So there was a couple there that did stand out for overbought, oversold levels. Let's go to Coop. That one looked like it had a nice, uh, nice breakup on the upside of the 50 yard line there. Stochastics showing pretty bullish. Just filled a major gap and tested another major gap, which was filled previously, but that's another resistance. Uh, uh, EMA is not showing the best posture. Uh, average volume is up nicely from 1.1 million to 1.5. So that's pretty nice. Uh, on the daily, you could see here that this stock is currently trading 27% lower than all time highs. So that's a little reassuring. And 284 is only $5 away. And then 287 ish, it's about $8. And then 298 is about 20 bucks. So, not the most comfortable entering a swing trade here. But I have played Coop before on these levels. I played this one. Um, and I have made significant gains from previous technical analysis. So, I do see the potential on this. So, I probably would have entered a swing trade. Uh, somewhere down here on these levels as I have done in the past. Good volume, nice major support level, confirmation that it held again, stochastics breaking back into the extreme, RSI breaking back into the upswing. So those are the big things that I look for on swing trades is major support, major support, major support levels only. Um, major resistance is tough to find, especially since everything's hitting all-time highs. So major support levels, that's what we're looking for. Fastly is one of them that's been bouncing in a demand zone for some time now that I have played before in the past. I made a lot of money on Fastly bouncing off these levels in the past. So when I see it on major support, I entered this one actually at 62 a couple of weeks ago and I, I cashed out at 72, but it ran all the way up to like 80 almost. So EMA posture um, is not the, not the worst on swing trading, but you do want good bullish posture. But what I'm really looking for most is the stochastics breaking from the extreme back into the purple zone with the K over the D. I'm looking for the RSI bouncing off, breaking back up to the upside. And I'm looking for good volume on that day. All right. Good, good volume. So you can see there was much higher volume here than it was there. These bounces off major support is what I love to play. So my best swing trade, um, I told you yesterday, and I'll show real quick, was MA. Where the hell is MA? MA was one of my best swing trades last year. Same thing right here. Chart out your major support lines. Once the stochastics broke up, broke to the upside, and this bounce on the daily RSI went back to the upside, I entered a trade here at 283, and I cashed out $17,000 just a couple of days later. I got lucky, obviously. I'm not going to say, oh, there was skill on that one. Who the hell expects a, uh, you know, a $30 day? But it happened. So for swing trades, most important thing is we're sitting at major support levels. Stochastics are showing the potential of a bullish uh, reversal because this could have got rejected right here at the extreme on both of these. It could have, and that would have been my exit. That would be my stop loss. So that's why you got to pay attention to swings uh, for the first couple of days and then let them go. So the stochastics is the big one for me. K breaking into the D going back into the extremes. And then RSI going back up to test that 50 yard line. The break of the 50 here was another huge uh, momentum swing there. So that was one of my biggest ones. Tesla, uh, besides the big technical analysis breakout, my, uh, my largest win of last year came from Tesla breaking out of this beautiful triangle right here. Uh, this breakout to the upside, breaking above the 50 yard line, breaking above here, the, the K over the D mid, mid uh, 2080 is very bullish, very, very bullish as we talked about yesterday. So RSI breaking the 50 yard line, K crossing over the D, Tesla breaking out of the triangle. This leads to $77,000 profits. And this is why I love using the Heikinachi candles on my swings is because it shows such a beautiful trend, even though this trend probably looks still kind of good 
here on Tesla. Um, you know, this might have spooked people out or this gap or this one. Um, but when you use the Heikonashis for swing trading, it gives you a little bit more of confidence, you know, like, oh, you know, the, the trend still looks pretty strong right here. Uh, I shorted SPY last, I believe, September right here. I was deep in SPY and QQQ puts right here. I got in at 249, I think. I was actually like a day early. I jumped the gun on this one. Um, but if you look here on the swing trades, Heikonashi candles, you can see we didn't have a didn't have a red day forever. Broke above the annual trend line. Um, but right here was the big buy signal, okay? So just so everyone sees, the D line went back over the K, breaking into a bearish posture. We broke back into the streams the same exact day on the RSI. There was a huge red day, bounced off of the trend line, which was very bullish, but then the next day we broke right into it. Okay, so that second day was the strong confirmation of a downtrend. Um, I secured my bag this day at like 339, 338. I took it like, I think it was like 16, 20,000 on this one. But look at the downtrend there, you know, just from that major daily swing down. So momentum oscillators is the biggest thing that drives my swing trades on major support resistance levels only. That's it. I don't care about intraday swing or small swing trades like this. Um, I only do it on major support and resistance. That's why I don't swing trade naked calls or puts very often is because it takes me a while to assess and find these, um, these trades. I shorted Lulu, uh, I believe it was right here on the break of this huge pennant that it was in for a while. Um, I checked to clarify the D was above the K. We're below the 50 yard line on the daily. Volume had spiked and we did confirm a breakdown here. And I rode Lulu from 320 to 305, I cashed out. Another big gain there, but it did fall all the way down to the 270s, okay? Just because your momentum oscillators are showing that there is nobody here stepping in. They also broke out of a major technical, technical analysis pattern which happened to be the 200 EMA on the daily, which is also a major, major support level there. So does everyone see that? I like fucking with major supports, not as much as major resistances because it's very tough. I would have probably, you know, you could play something up here, but when bullish posture on the EMAs are there, you're not gonna find your best one. So that's how I swing trade. That's why I don't, I don't call swing trades very often. The last one I did actually was Coop. Um, we, I think we actually did play Coop last time, didn't we? We entered, I think it was this one. We took the balance at like 245, right? And I think I called, yeah, at 255 or something, we cashed out uh, after it got rejected on this gap here at 262. That's where it was. Uh, we took huge wins on this one. And look how small that is. And that, that's very small. And then the entrance on that was the stall and the K crossing back over, or the, the K crossing back over the D right here. The bounce right here, even though it was short-lived and it didn't last, we still made gains on that because the momentum oscillators worked. You could use this strategy with crypto. You could use this strategy with um, whatever the fuck you trade. It doesn't mean, you know, there's no telling what you could trade these days here. You could trade your NFTs, trade your crypto, trade your Forex. These strategies work for anything. All right, chart out your major support levels. Get your momentum oscillators to do some work for you. Find a stock with good volume and be patient. Be patient on swing trades. Wait for these major support levels. DocU, look at DocuSign. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at the price data I have here. Just from looking at that, I bet you that you new traders here, you probably feel comfortable when DocU hits around 191,955. Just from looking at this chart, do you see how this gives you kind of like a sense of confidence? Like, damn, look at DocU over that 191 mark. I entered DocU on the last 191 mark. You wanna know why? Because let's take a look. My stochastics broke back up to the upside here. K cross the D. I saw the RSI bounce right here at 29 or the 30 mark, very bullish. I entered and after I saw, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, I think I'm going to enter here. I wrote it just to 200. The next day I cashed out. It was at like 200. But if you held, you go up to 225 in two days. That's three to 400% gains on these options. 
Um, and I show you guys now exactly how I, uh, I choose those options. Uh, nope, actually I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna show you guys that tomorrow during risk management. But that's it, that's how I day trade, that's how I swing trade. Very important for swing trading. Biggest things, major support levels. Learn to be patient and fucking learn them. Those major support levels print nicely. Um, get your daily time frame stochastic and RSI to be in sync with you. The momentum oscillators show so much. Uh, after that, you just want confirmation that the reversal is going to hit and your stop loss was your entry. Simple as that. Here's the conclusion. Conclusion. Day trading involves using technical analysis and charting systems to make many trades in a single day. Um, swing trading makes trades based on swings and stocks that take place over days to weeks. Guys, you can't panic on swing trades in the first couple of days. And another thing I'll, I'll tell you right now, but I'm going to go over it strongly tomorrow, is never, ever average down on a swing trade on the same day. And I'll, I'll tell you why it makes no fucking sense tomorrow. Traders should choose the strategy that complement their skills your preferences and your lifestyle, not Max's. I'm simply telling you what works for me, my pieces of the puzzle that, you know, that work for me, but find out what works best for you. If I can drive you guys in the right direction and you say, you know what Max has going on is actually pretty solid. Test it with paper first, try it out, make it yours, make little corrections and go for it. I just want you to be confident in your analysis. One trading style is not better than anyone else. This is just what suits different needs and styles. Day trading has more profit potential and percentages based on smaller trading accounts and swing trades have a better chance of maintaining those percentages uh, as the account grows. As I trade a six figure account now, my account's closing up to 170, 175,000. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep swing trading because I'm building to that 200, $250,000 mark this year again. Um, I do it every year and then I'll drop my account back down and I'll do it again and again. Um, but as I sit near that 170, 175 mark right now, I'm going to continue to swing trade. Um, equity requirements can vary a bit across the different markets and trading styles. Uh, day trading will require more time than swing trading because you got to stare at the screen intraday, but both take a great deal of practice to gain that consistency, that confidence that you need to be a good trader, to learn how to put those emotions aside. All right. Day trading makes the best option for action lovers, for you adrenaline junkies. I was a paratrooper in the military. I love getting my heart rate up. Nothing makes my fat ass happier, all right? But I cannot fucking day trade anymore because I got to protect my account, people, all right? Those seeking a lower stress, less time intensive option can embrace swing trading. I swing trade condors and credit spreads and debit and all kinds of shit now because it's just so much easier on the stress. Um, I'm trying to make out of, make it out alive on this trading career. And so implementing these stress-free trades that are very profitable and work for me, if it's not broken, don't fix it. I'm gonna keep that up. And I suggest you guys do the same. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how I day trade. That's how I swing trade. Those are my strategies. And now you're from familiar with Max's uh, day trading and swing trading strategies. We can get you ready for our next class tomorrow, which is risk management, please do not miss it. But for those of you that are going to go, thank you so much for attending day seven of the Max Options Training Beginner Course. Does anybody at all have any questions at this time? Please feel free to ask away. We'll spend a couple minutes answering questions. Thank you guys so much for attending. If you enjoyed this section of the MOTBC, head on over to our testimony review channel. Say, damn, that shit taught me a lot. Or Max, you day trade like a king. I know it. Thank you. Your max, your swing trading strategy is awesome. Thank you. I know it. Um, we also are on Google Trust Pilot or Facebook. If you want to leave a review, if you're enjoying the class, please let me know. Uh, it would be fantastic. It goes a long way. Thank you guys so much. Have a great, great evening. Uh, we'll we'll stand by for a minute or two if anyone's got questions at this time. How do you get to level three trading on Robinhood, John? You simply got to apply for it, my friend. You just enable options spreads on Robinhood under your investing tab. Anybody else?
Yes, absolutely, David. We'll be releasing all of this. Um, we're having the first couple of classes edited now professionally, and then it'll all be released. Um, trust me, if you follow me on any of my social media platforms or in the Discord, you will know when the release is. I want everyone to take the class for free. Um, I didn't write most of the information, but I break it down for everybody and I put my own little twist into it and you'll be able to get it all, Dave. Promise you, buddy, all right? You stick in there. Anybody else? Last questions, going once, going twice. Sold. All right, everybody, you guys have a great evening. Thank you for joining the Max Options Trading Beginner Course, and we'll see you at the buzzer tomorrow before we go over risk management for tomorrow night's class. Take care.